So now we have to talk about positive feedback loops. So in positive feedback loops, I use this example, it's a pretty straightforward one. They do not maintain homeostasis and they're used for what we call short-lived events. So we use this example of oxytocin. Oxytocin is made in your brain in the hypothalamus. It's stored in the posterior part of the pituitary, just stored there, and then it gets released. It does a couple things, causes milk secretion from the nipple, causes bonding, we'll talk about that later, and it causes uterine contractions. So we have a situation, here's a situation, I always tell students we've got this is exactly what a fetus looks like in the uterus. So this is a uterus, it's poorly drawn, and look, there's a baby in there, right? Now it's time for labor, right? The baby has to come out. The baby can't stay in there forever. So oxytocin is released, and it's going to stimulate the smooth muscle in the wall of the uterus to contract, and that's what contractions are to help push this baby out, right? We want a healthy, happy baby to come out, right? So oxytocin, we have positive in the green here, means go, right? Pop, go causes the uterus to contract, right? Now, if this was a negative feedback loop, the more the uterus contracted, you know, this would be negative, right? And we'd say, okay, uterus is contracting. Okay, slow down. We don't want to contract too much, right? That's, that's enough. We want to keep contracting. That's not how it works. In this scenario, this is a short-lived event, and we want this baby to come out. We're not trying to just maintain homeostasis, right? So what really happens is not a negative feedback, the feedback we are getting from oxytocin's effect in here is positive. So instead of a negative feedback, this would be a green line. It's positive. It's going to say, hey, make more oxytocin and release more oxytocin. So these loops going back are positive. So it's still a loop. See, a loop goes around and around and around. What happens here? Oxytocin causes the uterus to contract. Well, the contractions of the uterus will cause you to make not less, but more oxytocin. So oxytocin goes up, oxytocin goes up, uterine contractions go up. It goes up and up and up and up and up until well, there's a ceiling somewhere, right? So until the baby comes out. And when the baby comes out, the baby's born, you have a happy, healthy baby, and then this is over. So that's why I call this a short-lived event. So these positive feedback loops are short. If I could spell short lived events. So another example is blood clotting. Once the blood clots, <clears throat> there's a blood clot in place and the bleeding stop and then it turns off, right? You don't want to keep clotting your blood. So most feedback loops are negative feedback loops. Homeostasis is maintained by negative feedback loops. Positive feedback loops are just for short-lived events in scenarios like this, okay? Um, and we'll talk more about oxygen.